Uh, hello students, uh, welcome to this lecture on the timing constraints. So in this particular lecture, we will look into some of the, uh, the static timing analysis, uh, uh, the parameters, especially the setup and hold time. And uh, for two different circuits, one is the CMOS latch design, another one is the, uh, the flip-flop designs. And what we are going to do is uh, try to evaluate or uh, try to um, uh, express if uh, to some extent uh, what is the setup and hold time with respect to the propagation delay uh, uh, of the of the circuits uh, of the digital blocks which we have been using in the latch and the flip-flop designs. Right, uh, so moving ahead. Uh, Okay, so this is uh, the CMOS latch design, which we had seen um, the, I think this is the circuit number seven, uh, which we had seen in the previous uh, lectures, where we had the inverters and then the, uh, 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 you know, the transmission gauge followed by the inverters. And then in the feedback path, we had the tri-state inverter to ensure that this particular node is statisized and the output uh, node uh, getting isolated from the uh, X node, uh, we, we bring in the inverter here. And then the inverter here is to ensure that the input noise is not passed into the circuit and uh, this particular inverter is to ensure that the output is isolated uh, from any kind of a noise uh, you know and getting it back into the x node or to the uh, latch circuit so this this forms uh, the complete design which takes care of uh, all the all the problems associated with the earlier uh, latch design right so uh, now let's uh, look at this particular uh, um, uh, the timing diagram here. So I have a clock here, uh, the high level of the clock, that is when uh, we should uh, be able to get into the transparent mode. That means that output Q uh, should uh, reflect to the uh, changes made at the input, si input side. So based on the, uh, the clock here, the high level of the clock, uh, whatever is the input that's been passed, I'll get it at the output side. Now the question is uh, how far or how late, how late the input can be passed, the input changes can be passed uh, within this clock uh, level high, right? So that the output will be able to capture it properly. So how late in the sense, whether the question is, you know, while uh, the clock level is high in this particular time period, uh, or rather in this particular duration, uh, you know, can I send the, uh, the changes at the input side, at the D side, somewhere here, and whether the output will be captured right properly or should I should I need to send it somewhere at this particular portion so that I will have some amount of time so that the output will be able to capture right so here uh, you know that is kind of defined by the T setup time for the uh, for, for the CMOS latch design right so, so the T setup time says that the input should be passed at least before the T setup time of the of the uh, of the uh, falling edge of the clock so that the output will be captured uh, properly, right? So this, this T setup time ensures that, that the input should be passed at least uh, before the T setup time with respect to the, uh, you know, the falling edge of the clock for a high level of a latch design. So if it is a low level of a latch design, uh, this T setup time should be for the rising edge, right? So the T setup time is defined so it says that the input if it is passed before the T setup time uh, of the falling edge of the clock in this particular case, I'll get the output to be nicely captured by the latch design. Now, how do we characterize this T setup time? So here I've said that T setup time is nothing but, uh, you know, the, the delays uh, that is passing through this digital blocks or the, this digital gates, the inverter here, uh, the transmission gate here, and uh, this particular inverter here, uh, uh, so I've written the output one uh, of the output one represents the, the output of the first inverter. Second represents the output of the second state, which is nothing but the transmission gate. Third represents the output of this, uh, the inverter, which is the third stage. And I've drawn the outed lines uh, showing that, you know, it should have, you know, the D should be uh, made available before the falling edge. So this particular dotted line says that the signal should have enough time, the signal uh, that is passed with the D input should have enough time to propagate till it reaches here before the clock going low, right? So the T setup time is actually characterized as uh, the propagation delay of this particular inverter, uh, the propagation delay of this particular transmission gate, and then the propagation delay of this particular inverter so that it, it, it uh, you know, it is made available uh, till here, 
right? So that's what I've written T1, the first stage inverter, T2, the second stage inverter, T3, the, uh, the third stage inverter. So that defines the T setup time, right? Now let's uh, take some, uh, some cases to, uh, to validate this particular definition of the T setup. Uh, let's say what happens, uh, you know, let's, let's bring in some example of, uh, let, let, let's take an example of this being 10, nano, uh, 10 picoseconds and then this being 10 picoseconds uh, and uh, this also being uh, 10 picoseconds. I've just taken it for the simpler understanding. So all of them are uh, 10 picoseconds. So the total uh, T setup time should be 30 picoseconds. That means the input should be passed at least 30 picoseconds before the clock going low. Right, that is when uh, the output we can say that we can confirm that the output will capture uh, the changes in their D signal. If, for example, let's say that uh, the T uh, the T setup time is set to thirty picoseconds. All right, but uh, my clock, right, uh, the clock comes in only just before 10 picoseconds of the, uh, the input comes in only 10 picoseconds just before the clock going low, right? So the input comes in, it has, you know, it comes in only at uh, 10 picoseconds before the clock going low. So if that is the case, uh, if the input comes in, uh, it takes 10 picoseconds to reach to the, uh, to the first portion or rather to the first stage. And after that, the clock is going low. Right, so after that the clock goes low, so that means that the so this will be uh, zero, and then this will be one. So the transmission gate will be off. So that means this particular uh, you know whatever the signal it has reached here due to the changes in the D is not propagating or it's not passing uh, to the other side because the clock is low. That means that the transmission gate is off now. Right, so it is not going to capture uh, whatever is uh, provided at D. So Q will not capture whatever is provided at the D signal. Right now, what happens if uh, t t setup time is thirty picoseconds, but uh, the d signal is passed uh, instead of ten uh, picoseconds? Let's increase it to twenty picoseconds. It's not thirty picoseconds yet. So what happens if it is uh, twenty picoseconds? Right. So the input signal is passed uh, twenty seconds uh, just before the clock going low. So that means that uh, the uh, that means that, uh, you know, if the input signal is passed only 20 picoseconds, so it is able to pass this particular inverter, it is a, the signal will be propagating to this particular portion. And after that, the clock is going low, so the transmission gate will be off, right? So after that, uh, it goes low, but by the time it goes low or this particular transmission gate is off, we have anyways have the signal here. So then in that sense, the queue should be able to uh, get or capture the valid D signal, right? But doesn't that doesn't happen because it still needs to propagate here. Uh, it still needs to propagate to this particular inverter and uh, then through this tri state inverter and then push this Q signal. What really happens is if it is only 20 picoseconds, but the setup time is uh, 30 picoseconds, then in that, in that case, it uh, the signal, whatever is the D signal is being propagated into the node number two and then this uh, transmission gate is off, all right? So that means that it doesn't have any kind of a driving capability coming from this particular inverter because this is off. So this inverter will uh, actually ensure that the two node is, uh, you know, is driven to either v to v by the VDD rail or to the ground rail, right? So that doesn't happen. So, so that particular channel is uh, switched off, right? So although this uh, two signal is high or low, the previous state signal is still, you know, and then uh, the previous state signal is here. This tri-state inverter is now getting activated because the clock has gone low. So that means that the tri-state inverter is now activated and then the previous state signal is going to switch on the transistors here. And this particular transistor, uh, you know, the tri-state inverters, uh, the transistors there is going to be driven by by the VDD or the ground rail based on the input here, which is nothing but the previous state. So I will get back the previous state output here and then thereby the Q will be reflecting the previous state output and not the one which is kind of recently updated by the D signal. All right. So just to take an example, let's say that if I if I say that T setup, you know, which, which is kind of wrong here, T setup is uh, only T1 and T2. So I'm not taking the inverters uh, propagation delay at all here. 
So what really happens if if that is the case, right? So the d previous, let's say the previous value is one, and then here it was zero, it was zero here, and then it was one here. Uh, this one was fed back to zero here, and then the q was nothing but one previously. But now there is a change here. Uh, d is zero now, so that zero is getting reflected into the one node as one here, and that one is getting trans, uh, trans uh, you know, it's passed by the transmission gate as a one here. But after that, the clock goes low. So that means that uh, the clock goes low. That means this particular tri-state inverter is going to be driven by the input of one here and not not zero because it still not has passed to this trans uh, to this particular inverter because we are not accounted for this particular propagation delay. So this one, uh, right? Although this is one here, but it doesn't. You know, it doesn't have time to make the zero here and the previous state is one here. So this is going to get driven. Uh, the output will be zero here, which is going to get driven by this tri-state inverter. So instead of one, it still shows uh, the previous state zero and then the previous state of one. Right. So that's what uh, I have written here. So it may be overwritten to the zero here because of the previous state when the because the clock goes low. Right, so the T setup time has to consider this particular uh, inverter delay also. It has to con uh, consider this particular inverter delay. It has to consider this particular transmission gate delay as well. So hope uh, this particular example makes it very, very clear. Now, the other uh, significant uh, static timing analysis parameter is the hold time. Uh, uh, so what is this really the whole time? So this is again uh, the latch design, which uh, which we have been seeing the most recommended latch design. Now remember that or notice that the phi and phi bar here, right? Uh, so one goes to the uh, the NMOS transistor, the other one goes to the PMOS transistor, and we always up till now we have been considering the clock uh, whenever the clock changes uh, from high to low and then uh, uh, low to high. Uh, we said that uh, you know it will be ideal so clock bar also changes at the same particular time which doesn't happen always right there will always be a delay between the clock and another clock bar signal because this clock bar signal is actually generated from the clock signal of course there will be an inverter and then the inverter is going to drive that uh, complementary output so the clock bar is always uh, you know the behind the clock so there will be a delay here. In this case, you know, the, I've designed the clock signal and then the clock bar signal. So there is some kind of a delay here. And this particular delay, I'm calling it as propagation delay of the clock bar signal. So that's why I've written a TPD and then the clock bar signal, right? And if I now consider the D input signal here, right? So the D input signal, let's say that it is coming, uh, you know, it is it is satisfactory it is satisfying the t setup uh, time constraint so it is coming before the t setup time for the you know just before when the clock uh, goes low before the t setup time right and then it uh, you know it has to stay till the whole time of the clock going low right if it doesn't happen right so if it doesn't uh, stay there if the d signal doesn't stay consistently for the t whole time Right, so that means that the D is, uh, you know, it is, it is coming back low, or it is kind of fluctuating, or it is, uh, it is not staying at uh, the signal we want to capture. Right, so it goes back to zero. There is a possibility that when the clock goes low here from one to zero, right, so this atmos transistor will be off. But this particular PMOS transistor, because, because of the delay, because of the delay, this is still zero, right? It takes some time to go from zero to one, right? So in that sense, this will still be on for some while during this particular portion, right? Uh, this particular portion where this is low and then this is also low and after that it is going to be high. So phi bar is low. So whatever changes happens at the D, can get reflected here and can get passed to the X node and then can get reflected at the Q node, right? So if it is a really, uh, you know, if it's really the contamination delay, uh, which is really fast, which is very, very low, so it's contaminated delay can go here, contaminated uh, delay makes the signal go reach here and then reach to the Q output. So in fact, we will be capturing 
a wrong signal whereas we the intention is to capture this change in one year right and uh, you know whatever the fluctuation happens at the d side you know before that that can get captured so what we really need to do is ensure that the d signal is staying right even after the clock goes low the d signal stays to the expected input to the expected input so that it will be will be able to capture the expected output signal right it stays low it stays to that particular signal level till the t hold uh, after the clock goes low right so after this particular uh, edge whatever is the t hold time it has to retain and it has to stay there for that t hold time after the clock going low after the uh, clock edge uh, the negative clock edge for the positive uh, latch design right so phi and phi bar has some delay so d should be stable during the phi bar delay otherwise the data can sneak in so whatever is the changes here can can directly get sneaked in into the queue so t hold is as per our definition it is nothing but the delay that it takes for the q bar right uh, so the propagation delay for the q bar signal so d t d should be stable till the t hold time in fact our d uh, whatever is the uh, the stable the d it should be retained for t setup plus t hold time so that we will get the proper output or an expected output at the output of the latch right so it should be stable for the t setup before the clock edge going low and t hold after the clock edge going low right so that we will get the expected output right hope this is clear so let's uh, try to understand what is the setup time for the flip flop designs right so for the flip flop designs again uh, you know if i'm considering the, the negative edge flip flop so remember that for the latch design we had considered the positive level of the latch so for this particular flip flop design so what i have considered is uh, the positive level of the latch first followed by uh, the negative uh, level of the latch so it is a basically a uh, negative edge uh, triggered flip flop so a negative edge triggered flip flop and its definition of the set setup time is also very very similar um, so i have drawn a clock signal here and then a clock bar signal here which which will have some kind of a delay the d input you know the question for the setup time is always you know what should be the by far uh, the most uh, uh farthest signal that i can pass so that it will be able to capture the signal at the output of the flip flop right so if uh, you know the the answer is nothing but it should be uh, it should be made available at least before the t setup time of the clock going low for the negative edge flip flop so for the negative edge flip flop during this particular edge only whatever is the changes happens you know just before the t setup if the d has to go from 0 to 1 so that 0 to 1 has to happen now, um, at least before the t setup time of the negative edge of the clock so that the output will be able to capture it properly right so the t setup time again uh, its uh, definition it says nothing but the propagation delay of this particular inverter plus the propagation delay of this particular transmission gate plus the this particular inverter right uh, so if we have then uh, the signal whatever is the changes here will get propagated until uh, this point uh, 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 nicely or properly or expectedly and then whenever the clock changes from uh, high to low uh, so this particular uh, latch design will be on and then the changes here will be reflected into the Q output so we'll be able to capture the right output uh, based on the changes of the D signal right but if I, if I don't do if I have this uh, you know the D signal arriving you know just after the T setup time uh, requirement right even in the previous case where we had uh, 10 nanoseconds 10 nanoseconds and 10 nanoseconds but the D signal was arriving at 20 nanoseconds then it is it, it, it is able to pass up till here but then because of this previous state this signal will be overwritten by the previous state and then when the clock goes low we will have the previous state signal. So the similar uh, things are expected even in the flip-flop design. Uh, so the T setup for the flip-flop as well as the, you know, the negative level of the uh, uh, the latch design remains the same. So it is nothing but uh, this inverter's propagation delay plus this particular transmission gate and then this particular inverter's delay. Right. Now, what should be, uh, you know, how much time it takes, 
you know once the d is passed before the t setup time right so there is no setup violation and how much time it should be able to generate the output signal right that particular uh, you know propagation delay from clock to q is given by uh, the tpcq so propagation delay of clock to q it is nothing but once the signal has reached here and it is waiting for the clock to go low so that is when uh, it is doing the transition from high to low so during this particular high one the first latch will be on and then during this particular level the second latch will be on so the fourth node output of the fourth node uh, which is kind of uh, made available uh, because the d signal has uh, has arrived before the t sufficiently before the t set of time so the fourth node signal is available and it is just waiting for uh, you know this latch to get activated and this latch whenever it becomes low this fourth node signal whatever is there it is getting reflected it is getting passed to the output node so that particular propagation delay from uh, fourth node to the q is called as the propagation delay clock to q uh, so whenever the clock goes uh, low here the transmission gate delay followed by this particular inverter's delay plus this inverter's delay will be nothing but tpcq so starting from fourth to the uh, through the x node through the q node is my is our propagation delay clock to q so that is another parameter for uh, uh, for characterizing uh, the flip flop designs so we we have now seen uh, the setup time as well as the uh, propagation delay clock to q for the flip flop designs all right uh, the flip flops uh, again what is the hold time again uh, what we had seen in the in the latch design is that the the d input should stay even after the clock uh, edge going low for the whole time it should stay at least for a whole time so even in this case uh, because the phi and phi bar has some delay uh, d should be stable otherwise the data can sneak in so the d should be stable uh, till the whole time has reached and then we will get the expected output otherwise what happens is because of the delay in the q and q bar even if the q is low q bar will still be low for some duration so even if the nmos transistor is off we will have the pmos transistor on for a certain duration and then the the the, the signal the changes here right even uh, in between uh, the clock edge and then the t hold time if at all the d signal changes here is going to get sneaked in into the output node here and uh, whenever it goes uh, low uh, this can get reflected into the output right so we should not change the d signal uh before the t hold time it should be changed at least after the t hold time so it should be held the d signal should be held for a particular duration that is the t hold duration even after the clock edge going low right and the clock edge and the t hold is also defined as nothing but the tpd uh, uh, clock bar so propagation delay of the clock uh, uh, complement of the clock that is being generated from the clock signal right very very similar to that of the latch designs uh, definition right uh, so what we have seen is a flip flop in the latch designs and its uh, setup time hold time and especially for the flip flop we also uh, took into account the propagation delay clock to q so now let's uh, try to put this uh, and try to uh, uh, see what you know what are the uh, uh, how do we actually use that so let's say that uh, you know in in our combinational uh, circuit design especially in the system on chip where there, there's one particular computational block so i've written it as a combinatorial circuit it could be a computational block it could be a multiplier 8 bit 16 bit or whatever it is and then on the two other side we have uh, we have set up the flop design so that uh, we, we can time the output and that the timed output can then be going into some other part of the circuits right so if it's a timed uh, output i need the the flop designs i need uh, the flop designs or the latch designs in this case i have taken the flop designs uh, so flop 1 and flop 2 which is nothing but the flip flop 1 and flip flop 2 so flip flop 1 and flip flop 2 is characterized by the setup and the whole time let's say that both the designs are very very homogeneous that means that uh, the same uh, transistor bits and everything is the same uh, so in that sense this t setup time and then uh, the t setup time as well as the hold time as well as the tpcq everything of both the flip flops are same right and then this is a combinational circuit and uh, at this particular point of time as a designer we are uh, specified 
to ensure that there is no setup time failure right so so what do you, what do i mean by the setup time failure is uh, so given this clock signal which is the same for both the flip flop 1 and flip flop 2 right and this is a clock signal of certain particular uh, particular frequencies right so this is the first clock this is the second clock so what are we supposed to do is make sure that the combination circuit gives the output right takes the input in the first clock and gives the output in the uh, you know closer to the second clock but without the setup time uh, violation right so if i have the d1 signal whatever is the combination real circuit uh, coming or the output is uh, providing into this particular combinational circuit so that will be my d1 signal so if the d1 signal uh, let's say it is available much much uh, uh, before the t setup time of the flop one right then it can get easily captured and of course it stays after the t hold time also but i'm not drawn that all right so the q1 is going to give me uh, a proper output based on the d1 signal Right, so the Q1 uh, is going high only after the clock, uh, and let's say that this is a rising edge. So this is uh, a rising edge of the clock. Uh, let me write it: rising edge, and this is also a rising edge. So last uh, previous examples or previous definitions was with respect to the falling edge. So here I've just to, to make it very very simple. I've done taken it as a rising edge of the clock. So the rising edge of the clock, what it uh, you know the setup time and hold time is with respect to the rising edge of the clock, right? And the propagation uh, clock to Q is also with respect to the rising edge of the clock. So whenever the D1, uh, let's say that it has uh, it has arrived much before the T setup time, right? So I'll get a proper expected Q1 after the propagation clock to Q. Propagation clock to Q1 will be nothing but the inverters, the transmission gates. Uh, and then uh, the inverter and inverter. So the delay of the transmission gate, the delay of the inverter and the inverter will be nothing but the propagation clock to Q, right? And let's say that the combinational equatorial circuit uh, takes its own uh, propagation delay. So it will have its own propagation delay, TPDQ uh, uh, propagation delay for Q1 to generate uh, uh, the D2 signal. So that is what we have TPD, uh, in fact, it should be written as uh, TPD1, right? TPD1. And now it is available for the flop 2. And we are saying that it reaches much, much earlier than the T setup time for the second clock, right? Because we, we are making sure that uh, the combinatorial circuit does the computation and then it generates output, which is timed circuit. What it means is it is, uh, you know, this particular computation. Uh, the output of that will be made available in the second clock edge for the next combinatorial circuit, right? Its input has come in the first clock and its output is available in the second clock, right? So what it means is the combinatorial circuit is generating the signal and then making it available in the second clock for the next combinatorial circuit. So in that sense, it should provide the output you know, just before, you know, at least before the T setup time, right? Now, what should be this TPD1 then? So this is my clock time period TC. This is the delay TPCQ1 coming from the flop uh, one design. T setup of this second uh, flip flop, it should ensure that the output should reach before the T setup time so that my Q2 will be captured properly. So my TPD should actually be less than or equal to TC minus this minus this component. So TC minus of TPCQ plus T setup. T setup of the second, uh, of the second flip flop of the second flop. TPCQ of the first flaw, right? And TC is the overall uh, clock time period, uh, which can also be defined by the, uh, the frequency of the clock. So TPD, uh, this is the maximum delay that I can provide, uh, that I can use to design the combinatorial circuit. So that's why it is called as a maximum delay constraints. So if this TPD goes beyond this particular maximum delay constraint, let's say that the maximum delay constraint is 1000 picoseconds, right? Uh, so followed by this particular calculation on the right hand side. So TC minus uh, the first flip flop plus the second flip flop TPCQ and T setup respectively. If it turns out to be 1000 picoseconds, but my TPD, the propagation delay of the combinatorial circuit is 2000 picoseconds, then what is likely to happen is this D, uh, D2 signal is going to take more time Right, it's going to take more time. So either 
the second clock is not even going to capture the q2 signal at all or it, if it all if it you know falls in between this setup time and then the clock rising edge then the output is not going to capture it nicely right um, so in that sense uh, the tpd should be actually be designed less than or equal to uh, this maximum delay constraint right which is nothing but tc minus or tpcq plus t setup so we in fact have this tc tpcq and then the t setup right and we have only this particular duration to design our combinational circuit right the lower it is the better it is because lower means uh, so it will arrive at somewhere here it, it can arrive at somewhere here but it cannot go beyond this t setup time and remember that for uh, you know normally in our uh, designing the digital blocks the combinatorial circuit design is something which we will have to do it the other designs like the flops uh, and the latches which we are anyways going to take it from the standard cell library design those particular t setup and then the tpcq parameters are already defined right so we don't have an uh, we do not have an allowance to change the properties of tpcq and t setup or the t hold of the flip flop designs the only thing we can change is uh, change the combinatorial circuit so that the propagation delay is adjusted so that there is no setup time violation 